Hello there and welcome to my tutorial um, on ProBuilder. There's a fair few tutorials online, um, but not very many modern ones. So I'm just going to do a getting started, a really simple getting started tutorial um, for using ProBuilder. So I'm just going to create myself a new 3D project. So I'm going to use the 3D um, the 3D template there. And I'm just going to call this um, a Pro Builder test and uh, just get this loaded up ready to go all right so when you have your project up and running you want to go to window and then package manager to install the pro builder package it takes a little while for these to load up but the unity registry is where you're looking and you'll see if you go down the list that there's pro builder as um, an actual verified package so you don't need to um, use advanced settings to get the unverified packages so we're just going to use the pro builder and i'm going to show you how to use the um the uh, grids, the grid and snap, just so that it, you don't have to install an unverified package in here. So I'm just installing this now. I'm going to, um, it shouldn't take too long to do. So uh, we'll go back to the scene and I'll explain a few more things just as this goes in. So once it's completely in, um, you'll see that uh, nothing really has changed. But what you will find is that up in the tools menu, there's now a pro builder. Uh, menu item and what you should do is um, run this pro builder window now um, mine's popped up on my other monitor and you can uh, dock these anywhere you like uh, it's entirely up to you but i'm going to dock mine just on this left hand side over here uh, the I, I like the text version you can actually um, from the drop down you can change it to icon mode so you get the pictures rather than text but you're welcome to choose either one um, i like the text because i can actually read what it what it says um, when you create uh, shapes, there's this uh, new shape menu. If you hit the plus over here, you'll actually get another window. Um, and I'm going to dock this one right next to it so that I can choose the different shapes. Um, there's a ton of different shapes that you can do. The important thing to know here is that this is like a template. This, um, this blue thing right here is not actually built until you click the build button down here. Uh, the, you can change the size of it um, just by typing in values for whatever you want um, in order to get the, the basic size for a room. Um, I'm going to use um, just a 20 by um, 1 by 20 and just going to put a floor down. Um, by clicking the build here, you'll get a solid version and the template actually um, is still there. So you could click build again and, um, and then have another one. So if you wanted extra floors and stuff like that. Um, again, this blue one is the template one. So when you have this cube selector or any of the shape tool, um, objects up you'll see a template so that you can get it in position before you hit build uh, i'll quickly cover some of the other things so there's um toruses that you can choose and spheres and arches and all sorts of different shapes and um, one of the key ones there is stairs so that's quite handy you can change these values just um, be careful about how many steps you use just use the slider rather than type values and the um when we have the shapes in here um just like ignore this one for a minute while the shape tool is open by the way you'll have this um this preview in place so if you don't want the shape tool uh, this preview in place you can actually just close this tab and the shape uh, will go away uh, one of the key things about pro builder that um just needs a little bit of explanation is that you've when you've got this shape there's a couple of cool things that it does uh, one it puts on a default material and also uv um maps this material correctly so you'll see that um, when you make the shape bigger and smaller that you actually get one meter chunks with the texture that you have on and I'll cover that in a few seconds. Um, the other key thing that you have here is so when you have your object selected you'll see because um, I'm using Pro Builder with the Pro Builder window open I've got these tools up the top here. What this allows me to do is go between object selection, vertex selection, edge selection and face selection and uh, clearly um, we can uh, make some make, take some real advantage for that when we um we want to edit the shape so it's no longer just a cube so for example i could select a particular edge and i could uh, lift that edge up or down and get some slopes um one thing that you uh maybe didn't realize that i did there is i i hold down control um when i'm moving things so say i wanted to make this face a little bit um, move this face in i could hold control and it'll move it in snap increments of 0 0.25 um, that's really useful for getting things to line up and um, that and the vertex snap uh, tool that I'll show you uh, later but um, how do we control that so I'm just going to quickly show you um, the edit 
uh, menu has the grid and snap settings down the bottom. And again, with mine, it pops up in another uh, random window. So I'm going to dock it down here. So this grid and snap settings is kind of enough to get you going for um, simple levels. The uh, grid size, you can see you can change if you want to. And the move increments are currently at 0 0.25. And when you're blocking out a level, you probably want to change that to one. So you'll notice now when I hold control and drag, um, the items move in one unit chunks rather than in the 0 0.25 they were before. You can change rotate and scale snap um, as well. The other important thing, I'm going to go back to object mode here, is um, should the object weirdly uh, get off of, um, say it's slightly off and you see it's like minus 0 0.28, you can just quickly uh, choose this snap all axes and it will get rid of those um, those strange values um, and you can also do that um, with uh, a single face selected so if it gets slightly out you can snap all axes and it'll go back so it's a quite a um, uh, quite a handy thing to have this snap uh, snap thing up while you're making levels uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is just about making more complex shapes so uh, um, when you when you have these faces and um, say I wanted to also make I'm going to bring back my shape window um, and again, stuck over here. So if I wanted to make some walls, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. So the uh, obviously a wall might be uh, best as a cube, and I'm going to change that size to, um, if I just make this far away wall, so 20, and I'm going to make it um, four meters high, and then I'm going to make it one meter in depth. And um, I'm going to hold control while I move it so that it goes into position. So we're getting uh, approximately where we want it to be. And then um, what I can use is I can use the um, snap tool in order to uh, get that to exactly where I want it to be with grid snap. So you'll see that it's approximately where I want it to be. Just move myself down. Uh, the lighting's pretty bad. Um, when you use the V for vertex snap, this is a cool tip. So if you've got the move tool on and you hold V, then you can select any vertex on your scene and you can click and drag it to any other vertex in your scene. And um, that way you can snap walls directly onto the side of other walls. And um, when the lighting's like this, it's not difficult to fix. If you just go to window rendering lighting settings, it just quick click generate and this will just quickly um, regenerate the light values for the, the new geometry. You don't need to leave it on auto generate. You can just um, do it as you need it or when you're finished. So you see that you've got um, three units up. There's a, a second way, um, which is uh, in some ways slightly more complex using some more of the tools inside of um, the Pro Builder. If say you wanted a, a wall, but you want to keep this as a single shape, um, that's also easy to do. So you can select the face mode here and I'm just going to pick this edge face. And rather than um, rather than just um, making it move out one unit, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it go out um, by extruding it. So the extrude is one of the many tools that you can do um, that you can see down here in the Pro Builder window. The extrude is somewhere over here on extrude faces. Um, However, the, because it's so common, if you hold shift while you move something, you'll get an extrusion and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to hold shift and control at the same time and then I'm going to click and drag. And what you'll see is you get this extra line. So if I've got a vertex select, I've got vertices that run across here. Um, that gives me, if I go back to face select, it gives me this one face. So by extruding, you're actually creating more vertices rather than um, just moving existing vertices. And then with this one, I'm going to extrude again. So control and shift. So I've got snapping and extrusion. And I'm just going to pull it up three units. And then that way I've got a wall. Now, the cool thing about this is that um, back in object select, this whole object here, the wall and the floor, is a single object. Um, and one little tip as well when you're making um, more complex levels, um, oh, a couple of tips here. Um, when you make more complex levels, you'll see that you'll get a lot of things called cube. You can rename them if you wish um, in the inspector just by, um, say if I click on this one, I'll just call this um, floor. Um, however, what is quite common and what is quite easy to do is um, if you create an empty game object, so with nothing selected in the hierarchy, 
I'm going to create an empty game object and I'm going to call this um, level. And then any objects that you make, if you just drag them as children of level, I'm going to undo that for now. I'm just going to make sure that level's actually in the middle of my scene. So um, with the level empty game object, I'm just going to reset its transform to the center of the world. And then any of the things that are part of my level geometry, I can just drag them onto level. That way, when you've got hundreds of these, you'll be very thankful that you can just fold them out of the way so you can see, for example, your camera, your player, and the other actors in your scene. Um, it's a good idea to be able to do that so you can keep things more organized. Um, the last little tip I think that I'll give you for this getting started is just this, um, this overlap. If you uh, use a vertex snap, you shouldn't have anything overlapping in your scene. Um, but you don't want to have spaces potentially where light can bleed through. So if you are going to be baking light or if you're going to be, if you look at this one here, you'll see that there's this little strip of light in here and it's easy to fix. Um, it doesn't look great in the level when you're moving around, but it's pretty easy to fix by just making this one big, this one uh, overlap, but not overlap, just um, cover. So I'm just going to use the E to sorry, the shift, the control to um, pull that one. So I've just made it one unit longer so that the light can't bleed through anymore, but they're not actually overlapping. If you happen to um, make them actually overlap, so for example, if um, if this uh, whole face here, if we were to take this whole object and uh, move it over one, um, what you would see is um, where the polygons, and my, my graphics card is not bad, so you can't see it, but what we'd see when the polygons overlap is you get a bit of a flickering happening um, where polygons exist in exactly the same space, and that's a bad thing. So you should definitely try and avoid them overlapping, but um, you can close the gaps just by butting them up against each other. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. The um, installation process isn't difficult. Uh, the new shape menu gives you lots of options. Um, when you organize things, you should organize things in a hierarchy so you have everything under level. And renaming things is often quite good so you can find them. Um, when you've um, built these um, levels, it's really easy to go around and also paint them. And I'll quickly um, go on to show you how to do that. So for materials, um, you have the material editor. Um, when you click the material editor, you'll get this um, secondary window up. And this allows you to set particular slots for different materials. I'm just going to quickly show you how to set up new materials and then how to apply them to surfaces. So um, right now I've got a very um, basic level. I've got this Pro Builder default material, which appears in all of them. And uh, any face or surface or object that you select, you can apply this um, material to um, to the particular surface. So if I go face select and I click on one, I can press Alt 1 and it'll apply Alt 1 and uh, Alt 2 will apply the second material. So how do you add a second material? Well, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to quickly add a material. So I went to um, this amazing website, which is called CCO Textures, and I downloaded a couple of these um, textures as zip files and extracted them. When you extract them, you get multiple different um, you get multiple different textures, and uh, you need to create a material out of them. So um, if I look at my materials, I've just I tried uh, brick and tiles. So I'm just going to show you with the tiles. So this is a tile one for the floor. You'll see that there's um, these four different textures. So I'm going to take this whole folder and then uh, just drop it into my project. Um, and then we can close this. I can come back and do the other one later. So um, with this folder open, we've got these four textures, but a texture doesn't make a material. So I'm just going to right click on here and create a material. Um, I'm using the standard shader, by the way, but it, you can set up something similar with the universal render pipeline. So um, I'm going to call this, um, this material just tiles. You'll see um, that there's a bunch of different um, textures that we can apply to this. So this is the color texture and that goes onto the albedo of my of my material. Um, we have the displacement map which goes onto the height map of the material and we have the normal map. Um, this one is the one you need to watch out for. If you do the normal map um, onto normal map you'll see a little thing saying fix now. Um, the, the, the texture has to be treated slightly differently when it's a normal map. Um, and there's also a roughness. Now, the roughnesses um, can map fairly well 
of them to the metallic so if i put that on to you'll see that it's, it is a that little bit more shiny so and um, that's kind of what we want so once we have this material created i'm going to just drag it into alt 2. um what that means is that anything that i have selected if i press alt 2 i'm going to get that material so i have this face selected so i'm on face select here i'm just going to choose this ground face and I press Alt 2 and you'll see that we have the tiles associated um, the tiles get put onto that surface now. Um, the uh, Yeah, that's pretty much all there is that I wanted to show you. This is just a real quick getting started with Pro Builder. We can install it, we can um, create lots of shapes, we can organize those shapes, um, we can edit those shapes somewhat. And I do recommend just uh, play around with some of these tools. You're not really going to use a whole heap of them. And there's a lot of tutorials online um, that you can use. Don't forget to use snapping so that you don't get yourself in a tiz and uh, have things overlapping or not joining up when you finally do it. So um, from the edit menu, uh, grid and snap settings. And I showed you how to set up some materials and apply those to our material editor over your, um, over your whole map. So hopefully that's enough to get you started and uh, you just need a lot of mileage, you need a lot of practice um, with level design and hopefully that will be enough to uh, get you started on that path.